Hi, I'm Sarah Bean Thompson, and I am a librarian in Springfield, Missouri. Hi there. Hi. How are you? I guess I'll do the first question too. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, were either of you familiar with Harold and the Purple Crayon as a kid, and, or before you took on the project? And do you have any memories of reading Harold and the Purple Crayon as a child? Um, Yes, we've talked about this quite a bit today, and um, so I know Rel is too, but um, I do remember it as a kid, but I remember it better reading it to my own kids a lot, because it was one of those books that they all really, that they both really enjoyed reading over and over again, and, and was a really sweet book, like, that I also enjoyed. <laughs> It's like a book that never aged yeah. in, a, in a beautiful way, right? It's like, and like, I felt the same way too. Like, I remember it more reading it to my kids. But it's something very powerful about this purple crayon that can make whatever your mind imagines. So, like, I was one of those very, uh, you know, use my imagination and creative kids, which is why I'm in the business I'm in now, because I love, like, just, even just being at my almost age of 45, I love the fact that I still have this crazy imagination to to this day. Like it's still crazy. Like I, you know, I st you know, I still had this dream of being a Jedi. I don't care how long it takes, <laughs> and not even from an actor's perspective. No, no, no. Like like a real full Jedi. blown Jedi. <laughs> Marianne, I wanted to know if you were library kids growing up. Did you go to the library as kids? And yes. I'd love to hear about that. A hundred percent. We actually t talked about this earlier, but I'm like, I love libraries so much. Part of what I love about the library is you can go and you can pick up like a book that you wouldn't think you would necessarily pick up. And that because you can check the books out, like you, you can, you, you're you exposed to all kinds of, you know, literature and, and books that like, that you might never, you know, explore if you didn't go to the library you know i love the smell of the library like i was always so excited when i was at the library i love the smell of old books like <laughs> <laughs> um i love bookstores too but you don't have to like buy the books so like libraries have like the most special place in my heart the library like for my you know i'm from chicago i remember when they built the harold washington library in downtown chicago and that became a place i went to almost every single day yeah like for real, for real, where I can just get away. Like, and they had everything in there. I would go in there and listen to music. Oh yeah. I would read old random articles. I yep. would, it was like, and at that time we didn't have a computer in our house. Yeah. So the library was my source to go use a computer. Like if I needed to type something up and get it printed, I would go to the library and do yeah. that. Yeah. And you know, Best and way. to be honest with you too, even just shows like Reading Rainbow, which we don't the talk best. about all the time, is I the reason it. why I was like, Hooked to going to libraries. And I love to read more reading books. Rainbow. People, like, nobody never mentioned that. LeVar Burton, LeVar Burton, such a great yes, love him, and I love reading Rainbow. It was and a big part of like yeah. that, that craze of reading. I couldn't wait today. for it to come on. Yeah, yeah. Arisa. <laughs> Hi, I'm a school librarian, and kind of like you're mentioning, you know, people don't know LeVar Burton. I will often <laughs> talk about a book, and these kids just. No idea. So how do you think this movie will relate to kids who haven't read the original Harold and the Purple Crown while also kind of transcending it and making it something great for those who know the story so well? I think this, like, the sort of concept of the book, like, um, is, even if you've read it, is very, like, surprising and fun and interesting. And, and the way that, like, the filmmakers have taken that, kind of the DNA from the book and stretched it out and and changed it and made it cinematic, I think is really wonderful. I think it'll also inspire a lot of people to go back to the book, reread it. Oh, I love that book. I want to read it to my kids. Like, I think, I like any good, like, adaptation of a book, I think it will inspire people to return to the book as well and see, you know, like, look at it with fresh eyes if they've read it before. And, and to take a look at it, check it out if they haven't read it before. Mm. That's a great answer. <laughs> Thanks. Sarah? So magic and imagination is a big part of the story. And so what is, what is your favorite part about the, just the magic and imagination of books and libraries? Ooh. Oh, man. I, that, that's, great. that's a great question, I, which is one of the things I miss about libraries. Like, 
some of my fond memories is like having guests come in and read to us. Ooh, the best. And yeah. you know, that doesn't happen often like it used to. Um, and I didn't know when it, they were coming. That's how much I went to the library. It was like, hey, this blah, blah, blah coming in. Like, oh, Walter Payton about to read, you know? So it's like, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, but no, seriously, it was, it, my, like, and I'm not even lying about this. Like, I was such a library nerd. Yeah. I, because the library was just my source of everything. Yeah. Even when I wanted to start reading scripts, yeah, That's I the still place love I found. going to the library. Like, I love it. You can find anything. There. I also just like like going for quiet, like just peaceful, quiet. Well, I'm gonna tell you something. I grew up on the west side of Chicago. I mean, and this is just real talk. It's just like you know, the Harold Washington Library really was somewhere where I felt comfortable being smart. Yes. Yeah. When it probably wasn't cool to be smart. Right, right, and right. And so that's the place I would go to. I even made friends there with people who went to other schools because we yeah. were all just sitting there and just read and look at stuff. Yeah, yeah. You know, so yeah, yeah. I, I know that's yeah. maybe deeper than what the question was. But that's <laughs> <laughs> Marianne? I love the Harold Washington Library, too. It's a fantastic place. And I just hope that... Um, you know, the kind of movie that you have made will inspire uh, young people and their families to go back to libraries if they're not scared of the librarian from the movie, <laughs> of course. And I would just love to hear a little bit more about how you think that movie adaptations can help draw kids back into reading mm, in libraries. I love it. Yeah, I mean, I, I really think that, like, inspiring, like, interest in the subject matter just gets people you know it's like how my kid like my daughter like loves harry potter and then she wanted to read the books it like inspired her to read the books because she want like the movies you know it kind of like i think those when when something is well done on the screen then you want to visit the book because there's information in the book that's not on the screen because they're two different art forms but you know both can be wonderful and both can tell the story in different ways so i think like if you're like a true fan of something you really do want to explore, you know, both of those things. I think, like, also, like, a lot of Broadway musicals are adapting books and movies. And, you know, I think, I think like, that kind of cycle of, like, retelling of stories, which is just very much, like, in our culture to begin with, retelling of stories is, like, a, a wonderful way to, like, drum up new interest in, in like, the original, you know, s source matter. Arisa? Lil Rel, I think your characters in particular are going to really excite kids who love imagination, like <laughs> you said, and who love this fantastic element. So what sort of unique things did you have to do as an actor and creator to make this character who is sometimes a moose, sometimes not a moose, come to live, come to, come to life on the screen? Well, that's a couple of things. I mean, first, I had to be really comfortable with getting back into my old version of imagination for me and not taking everything so serious. That's how that, Moose had to look at things like that. Like, I'm not going to take everything so serious. Even though Moose had some anxiety in his, <laughs> in his movie most of the time, but it was from a very innocent place of anxiety. We're in an airplane. I'm a Moose. I'm not supposed to be in the air. Yes, I'm going to be scared. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, <laughs> so it's just, it was just like making sure that the anxiety was had some innocence to it. I know that may sound crazy, but for real. And like even that, I was very conscious about kids watching this because kids will walk up to you and tell you when something ain't right. So I had to make sure every time I was scared and became the moose, I had to really be big scared. And then when I was a little scared, I had to act like I was a little scared because I didn't want no kid walking up to me like, well, you were scared the other time and you didn't turn back to the moose. So I had to make sure, <laughs> I, had to pay very, I had to be very conscious about the way, the levels of what my scare was and what it wasn't. But it really was just using my imagination, to be quite honest with you. And it was so much fun. Like, even re-watching it, you know, sometimes you do these projects and then you move on to the next thing. But I was like, oh, yeah, I had to get in that place of just... It made me smile watching the screening yesterday because I was like, oh, it was in a really fun place of using my imagination. The innocence was there. I could see it on the screen. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Thank y'all so guys. much. And we appreciate y'all, Yeah, too. we love Thank libraries. You so Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs>